Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A man is recovering this morning after being shot overnight on the northwest side. More details just ahead. New prediction this morning from government health officials about when a coronavirus vaccine might be available to most people. And taking a look outside with live cam, it doesn't look like that, we promise. Not that dark. There you go. <laughs> Mike's forecast is coming up. See, we didn't pay the, the light bill, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> they, they turn it back on. They're like, oh, there's a, there's a payment. There it is. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is August 21st, and the best part of the sentence I just spoke is it's Friday. I agree. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining us. Kind of a Goldilocks forecast out there. The uh, temperature here in San Antonio, not too cold, not too hot. Just right. That's right. But... You know, it's the uh -oh. humidity. Yeah, yeah it's oh, well, but not too bad yet. Well, it's it's a lot different than it has been the past yeah. couple of days. So uh, we had a couple of showers. We did hit 100 again yesterday, despite the fact those clouds moved on in here. Still had a couple of showers. Can't rule one out today. Here's the numbers. Just remember, yesterday these numbers were in the mid 50s for dew point temperatures. So humidity, as expected, has come back up. It will drop down somewhat later on this afternoon, but still, it's not going to be as comfortable even in the shade as what we had. And there's those few. Uh, showers that are still uh, hanging on in there in this northerly flow heading from north to south out there in portions of the hill country. Honda, you've got a couple of uh, uh, decent shower moving on through. They're heading down to the south at a fairly decent clip, so not just sitting in one spot. And even a couple of uh, heavier downpours scattered about there. Maybe a uh, uh, maybe a couple of flashes of lightning are going to be popping up later on this morning. Mold is on the high side, although it dropped down significantly from the previous day. And for the rest of the morning, we're going to have partly cloudy skies. Mid-70s around here and later on this afternoon. Yep, we're going to be right around triple digits again. Once again, a couple of those showers, maybe a thunderstorm. That uh, northerly flow still remains. Same thing tomorrow. We might actually have a just a hint better chance for a couple of afternoon uh, showers or thunderstorm tomorrow. And then... Boy, wait to see what's going on in the tropics. It's going to be like a horse race getting into the Gulf of Mexico with two tropical depressions, which probably will become tropical storms. We'll track those coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Morning, sir. Anything going on? Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. A couple of accidents we're dealing with right now. One just got cleared up. So we have uh, this accident here. This is actually construction. This is going to be eastbound 410. Uh, the exit to Vance Jackson Road is closed due to construction. So keep that in mind. Then this accident just cleared southbound I-35 North at North Evans Road. It was blocking the right shoulder, but that's all cleared up now. We had an accident here at Wood Valley Drive and West Avenue. That's just about cleared up as well. A vehicle hit a telephone pole there. It looks like CPS took care of that. And here's the construction again. Eastbound Loop, Northwest uh, 410. The exit to Vance Jackson still closed. All right, dealing with this accident I just saw right now on the screen. This is I-10 at Brazos there going into downtown. Looks like the wrecker is on scene and getting that cleared. But just be careful that is on the overpass there and uh, you want to watch your speeds when watch, uh, when passing those first responders and the tow truck drivers. All right, Mark, Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, San Antonio police say an argument led to a shooting last night on the northwest side of town happened in the 8100 block of academic post around 7 p.m. SAPD says two men were arguing for an unknown reason when that shooting happened. One man was taken to a hospital after he was shot in the shoulder. He's expected to be okay. The other man drove away in a blue car. And at last check, police were still looking for him. Bear County reporting now 185 new COVID-19 cases and our seven day average continues to drop. That average now sits at 138. Now the number of hospitalizations also continue to drop with 532 people in the hospital, 239 are the intensive care unit, 163 are on ventilators. We are at 15% of staffed hospital beds available. Meanwhile, the director of the CDC says southern states are turning the tide against new cases of COVID-19. And the government releases a new timeline on when a vaccine would be widely available. ABC's Andrea Fujii has the details. This morning, a new prediction from government health officials that a coronavirus vaccine may not be available to most people until as late as next June. It comes as positive signs start to emerge amid the pandemic. New data from Johns Hopkins University showing cases in the U.S. are on the decline for a fourth straight week. 
Overnight, Philadelphia announcing that restaurants can open for indoor dining with restrictions starting September 8th. And the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade will go on this year. New York City's mayor saying it'll look different, but traditions will stay the same. As the president continues to urge all schools to open, new guidelines from Policy Lab at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia that schools should only reopen in areas where positive test results are less than 5%. Only a couple dozen of, of the 750 counties that we track each week would meet those criteria today. In Los Angeles, it's day two of online learning for the second largest school district in the country. And in Indiana, a switch to remote learning for one school district after multiple students tested positive. <laughs> On college campuses, health officials say parties like this one at Syracuse University must stop. This junior at the University of Michigan, where more than a dozen students have tested positive, wants her classmates to do better. Your choices will have repercussions. Purdue suspended 36 students for partying. And the University of Kansas just connected dozens of new COVID cases to Greek houses on campus. I've been feeling pretty anxious, honestly. Um, I have really bad asthma. In pro sports, two members of the New York Mets tested positive, forcing their games against the Yankees and Marlins to be postponed. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. In Austin, a body buried in concrete in the backyard of a home. According to an affidavit, the man found dead has ties to Bear County. Pictures of the concrete site were also included in that affidavit. Police in Austin say the man who was buried there had a warrant out for his arrest here in Bear County. Witnesses told officers the man's ex-girlfriend claimed she and another person buried the man after she was beaten. That witness says they saw concrete in the shape of a body. Walker Ray Katz and Christy Cardenas are accused in this case. The bond for Katz was set at $100,000. Authorities are still searching for Cardenas. An identity has not been released. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers of San Antonio need your help solving a local murder case. They're looking for those responsible for the death of 55-year-old Connie Tatum. According to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, her remains were found in South Bear County back on July 28th. She was a resident of East San Antonio, was last seen in mid-July. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You could get a cash reward of up to $5,000. And time now, 437 and 75 degrees for now. Still ahead on Good Morning San Antonio, we take a look at those who are working from home. But what happens if home happens to be in paradise? And next, why the U.S. Justice Department wants the Supreme Court to review the decision to stop the death sentence for the Boston Marathon bomber. Outside with live cam. Yeah, we've been talking for a couple days now with our meteorology team about how active the tropics have become. All eyes on the Gulf and what could be a one-two punch from a couple of storms for several states. Mike will have the update coming up. Four forty in your morning headlines. President Trump's former strategic advisor Steve Bannon has been federally indicted for conspiracy to commit wire fraud and money laundering. It's a connection to a crowdfunding campaign to build a wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. Bannon was arrested Thursday morning at a boat off the coast of Westport, Connecticut. Bannon later appeared on video before a federal judge entering a not guilty plea. Prosecutors say Bannon and others defrauded hundreds of thousands of donors of the online campaign by falsely assuring them. The organizers were not taking a penny of the donation money. Bannon's indictment makes him the sixth person associated with President Trump's 2016 campaign to face federal charges. The Justice Department asking the Supreme Court to review the decision to vacate the death sentence for the convicted Boston Marathon bomber. The U.S. attorney says he hopes the move will result in the reinstatement of the original sentence. A federal appeals court in July ruled to vacate the death sentence. That means Johar Sarnayev could be given a new penalty phase trial. Then a new set of jurors would decide if he should be sentenced to death. The court also ruled to set aside three of his 30 convictions, but it said he will remain in federal prison for the rest of his life. Dozens of wildfires raging throughout Northern California have now claimed at least five lives and threatened tens of thousands of homes. The death of a resident was just reported in the northeastern San Francisco Bay Area. Three more people have died in Napa County since those fires began. In all, more than 30 civilians and firefighters have been hurt. 
A pilot on a water dropping mission in Central California died Wednesday when his helicopter crashed. Right now it is 442, 75 degrees. And coming up next, got one of those new fancy air fryers, but you don't know how to use it. We're going to show you ways to make sure you cook your food faster and better. And welcome back. It is 444. What if you could work from home but from paradise? ABC's Eva Pilgrim has that story in this morning's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, as millions of children and parents get ready for remote learning and remote working this fall, a new trend is emerging, doing it all from paradise during the pandemic. High school teacher Lamine Gobe is going to work from Barbados for a full year. It looked like um, a great opportunity. Barbados is touting its so-called welcome stamp plan, an offer to work from paradise for 12 months. Lamine saw a post on social media and is heading there in October. I think more people should be interested in going abroad to work remotely. If you can, why not? Right? You get to see the world. You get to try something new. And he's not the only one embracing this new trend. Coming up, we'll introduce you to more people who've made the leap to paradise and tell you about the deals that can make this dream a reality without breaking the bank. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. The air fryer is one of the most popular kitchen gadgets right now, mostly because it's easier to use and generates less heat than a traditional oven. And as 12 on your size, Marilyn Morris shows us they're not just frying up chicken nuggets anymore. Forget stove or oven, cause Mil Castillo relies on her air fryer to whip up healthy meals, especially when it's hot out. I love to use the air fryer compared to the oven because it gets too hot in the house. I just pop that salmon in and it tastes amazing. Air fryers are like countertop convection ovens. They cook by circulating hot air, which creates a crispy surface. It's perfect. Air fryers are for more than just chicken nuggets. Since they're basically a countertop convection oven, you can use them for things you'd normally bake or roast. So Consumer Reports staff took test models home to try a big menu. Roasted asparagus, banana bread, bratwurst, avocado fries, miso codfish, juicy ribs, spring rolls, and even pizza. So how do you get the best results with an air fryer? Food should be totally dry before it goes into the air fryer and you want to toss it with a little bit of oil or spray it with some cooking spray. And check the food often. Turn it so it cooks evenly and give small foods like wings or fries a toss from time to time. You don't ever want to use foods that have been dipped in batter because the convection fan in the air fryer can actually blow the coating right off. He says don't overfill the basket. Three-fourths full is good. As for cleanup, just wipe the basket down with soapy water. This air fryer by Farberware is a CR Best Buy. It's about $70. Simple to use, and it's quiet. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Not bad, 70 bucks. Yeah, looks interesting. Right now it's 447. Let's go ahead and check traffic with Nick Solis. Thanks, Steph. Things are looking good out there right now. Those accidents have cleared up, but we still have a little bit of construction on eastbound 410 at uh, Vance Jackson Road. That exit is still closed. Keep that in mind if you're headed in that way. It doesn't seem to be affecting traffic too bad, but it is closed there. You'll have to find an alternate route to Vance Jackson, probably go through uh, I-10. All right, here is that construction there. Um, oh yeah, that whole right lane of that exit is blocked off. Uh, traffic's moderate, but not too bad right now, like I said. So. Don't expect too much of a delay. Thank you, Nick. Mike, I walked outside yesterday evening. We'd had some storms in the area, and we had what appeared to be some mildly unusual cloud formations out there. Yeah, I mean, it was, we had the clouds move in. It's a northerly flow. You get those disturbances moving on in there. And what was interesting, though, is right before those clouds moved in, popped right up to 100. And the clouds came on in here and kept us down in the uh, the 90s. There were also a few more showers around the area uh, yesterday. And yeah, I mean, just looking at this picture, you would never guess that we hit 100. And it's going to be about the same situation uh, today. We do still have a few leftover showers right now. That northerly flow out there. Everything is sliding, obviously, from north to south. We had a couple of showers right there around Hondo. Those are now moving down toward Pearsall. And then a couple of more that are up here in the hill country. Moving along in a fairly decent clip straight to, again, north to uh, south. So we'll keep some of those around for the next uh, maybe a couple hours. This is what it looked like over the past 12 hours. And yesterday afternoon, some of those nice showers developed there. There were the clouds. Other folks didn't have anything as far as 
any cloud cover. It was basically uh, kind of in the western half of our viewing area, and here's the still we keep that northerly flow around here, and so that's why computer models are still indicating the chance for a couple of showers uh, throughout the rest of the afternoon. Few and far between, but. Hey, if you get some rain, fantastic. Now going into tomorrow, we do have the chance for a couple of more showers, maybe a little bit better shot at some rain. Also, we've got the flow coming in here off the Gulf of Mexico, and that's adding to the humidity because there is definitely more humidity out there this morning than what we had the past couple of days. Now, as far as tropics are concerned, here we have tropical depression number 13, and that's number 14 in the uh, Western Caribbean. Both are forecast to gain strength and they will continue to work their way in toward the basically to the west to northwest in toward the Gulf of Mexico. So here's what's going on as of right now. They are both forecast to become tropical storms and this one, depending on who gets named first, which one becomes the tropical storm first, it's going to be Laura and Marco and this one's going to stay right along the uh, Antilles here, moving in toward Hispaniola, Cuba, Bahamas, Miami, uh, the southern tip of Florida. This one's going to cross over the uh, Yucatan Peninsula and move into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, as far as becoming hurricanes, it looks like both will become Category 1 hurricanes as of right now. This one is obviously what is 14 right now is going to be the one that gives us the chance for some rain because it looks like it's going to be making land sometime by about the middle of next week right around Houston. Now we're not on the rainy side of it. That's the right hand side of the storm in relation to the direction of travel. Uh, but this again is our hope for a little bit of rain around here. The other one is going to be like I said working across uh, well pretty much drenching Florida and going up into the southeastern United States. Obviously that's something we have to watch because it's still a few days off but uh, Interesting because we're going to have two of them, almost like a horse race going on through the Gulf of Mexico next week. 94 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and 100 again today, actually maybe in the low hundreds there. And we're going to have a couple of showers hanging around as well. Now, tomorrow we are going to be staying, I think, right around upper 90s just because of the extra cloud cover around here and we do have some afternoon showers going to put about a 20 percent chance on that and sunday more sunshine around here and monday tuesday probably tuesday a better shot at some rain although not fantastic bad news is then we're still going to be hot after that can't remember last time we had two storms racing each other towards the gulf of mexico it's been a while um i mean you know there have been occasions when there's been I think four, even five mm -hmm. out in the in the whole Atlantic Basin, right. but not neck and neck like that. Yeah, and, and almost parallel paths, I mean, with some of these models as, right. as it stands. This could all change, of course, right? Yeah, but, yeah. you know, the way everything's setting up, they're both going to be heading in toward the United States, making landfall almost simultaneously. Unbelievable. We'll it be is watching closely. Yeah, it could be uh, that one two punch 452 75 degrees and coming up next for the first time since March, a movie. It's opening in wide release across the country. We're going to have a preview. I've already got my tickets for Russell Crowe's new film. Yay! Pick three numbers, 950, Fireball 1. Daily four numbers, 8790, Fireball 4. Cash 5, 2, 19, 23, 30, 32. And your Texas two-step, 4, 8, 11, 27, 9. Five Till new movies are finally being released in movie theaters, but there are still plenty of new streaming options this weekend as well. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. I'm pretty sure the guy in that truck's following me. He's road raging. For the first time since March, a movie is opening wide across the country. Russell Crowe's Unhinged hits theaters today where they're open. And director Derek Bort tells me he's seen the theater safety protocols in action. Touchless entry and and distancing in the lobbies and, and checkerboard seating and spraying the theaters down with, you know, these disinfectants that they're using elsewhere on planes and whatnot between screenings and, and, you know, wearing masks in, in a theater. So, I mean, my comfort level is I'm going to be at the theater Friday night. AMC theaters, the biggest chain in the country, will have about a sixth of its locations open this weekend, while movie theaters in the two biggest markets in the U.S., New York and Los Angeles, remain closed. Grace just transferred here from East River. I For those who can't go to the theater or just want to stay home and stream, Chemical Heart stars Lily Reinhardt in a teen drama based on the wildly popular book. That's on Amazon and in some drive-in theaters. On Disney Plus, it's Brian Cranston and the voice of Angelina Jolie in the family-friendly film The One and Only Ivan. 
And for streaming rental, Ethan Hawke stars in Tesla it's about nice. the famed 19th century inventor. This will transform the way the world works. Hogwarts, open once again. Warner Brothers' Harry Potter studio tour in southeastern England, where the movie franchise was shot, opened its doors to muggles Thursday for the first time since closing in March because of the pandemic. Happy birthday to Casey Musgraves. The Grammy-winning country star is 32, while Sex and the City actress Kim Cattrall is 64. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. We are just getting started here on GMSA. It's 4.57. And still ahead in our next half hour, a look back at last night as former Vice President Joe Biden formally accepted the Democratic presidential nomination. Plus well, how Fitbit is using some of its technology to help identify people who have symptoms of coronavirus. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Former Vice President Joe Biden closing out the fourth and final night of the DNC. I'm Inez de la Quatera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. A 16-year veteran fire captain with the Converse Fire Department will be honored today after losing his life to COVID-19. And taking a look outside with the live cam this morning, it is 76 degrees here, but Mike is watching things closely out in the tropics. We're going to check in with him in just a bit. Yeah, things are really percolating out there. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It's August 21st. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Yesterday evening, another nice little break. Yeah, the clouds were pretty good uh, moving in yesterday. Cooled things down a little bit, but we did hit that century mark one more time, Mike. Right before those clouds started moving on in there. And, you know, yesterday at this time, we we're talking about, okay, a very small chance for a couple of those showers, and then those clouds came on in here. That's that northerly airflow. You just get these little tiny disturbances, and they they just come racing down in here and that's still the situation I'm going to show you radar in a second 76 here in town which number wise about the same as what it was yesterday at this time but look at the top number that's about 10 to 11 degrees higher than what it was at this time yesterday so dew points more moisture in the air more humidity and that means not quite as comfortable when you step outside and as far as the aquifer down two tenths of a foot still 10 day average is about uh, four and a half feet below the 660 and mold is on the high side, although it did drop down significantly from the previous day's numbers, which were just <laughs> off the charts. So as far as uh, dew points around the area right now, we've got these numbers. Uh, notice in the hill country, it's still fairly pleasant. That's the year we had uh, most of the area yesterday, but this moisture has come back on in here. So we've got these numbers back up into the uh, the 70s there. Now, as far as the uh, radar picture right now, we've got a couple of these showers off to the west. Everything's moving from north to south, so there's still that northerly airflow in the atmosphere and a couple of, you know, decent showers here and there and even a couple of more developing north of the hill country. So we'll continue to see these sort of dropping down to the south throughout the rest of the morning. Once again, mold is definitely on the, the high side. So uh, a shower west this morning, a little more humid, mostly sunny skies, 100 and a shower. So depending on how quickly the clouds may or may not move on in here, that is uh, in the Temperature is obviously very dependent upon that. Tomorrow we'll have a few showers around the area, a couple of thunderstorms in the afternoon, maybe lingering into tomorrow night. And then we go into next week and hopefully we get some rain from the tropics. We've got two systems which are both going to be going into the Gulf of Mexico, both probably turning into hurricanes. We'll check that out in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Mike. Hope everyone's having a great start to your Friday morning. All right, one accident out there right now. This one just popped up. I'm going to give you more information on that when I can. Just dealing still with some construction here. This is eastbound Northwest Loop 410. The exit to Vance Jackson is closed. If you need to uh, somehow get onto Vance Jackson, you might have to take the next exit up there, West Avenue, go around, or go through I-10 and exit Vance Jackson. That way, this construction is still active. All right, 1604 and Tradesman, that's looking really good right now. 37 at Salado Creek running very smoothly one car on the roadway 37 at 181 there on the far south side that's looking great and i tend it for you inbounds and outbounds we had an accident there earlier looks all clear downtown all right everyone i hope everyone has a great day mark stephanie Thank you so much, Nick. It's official. Former Vice President Joe Biden accepted the Democratic nomination for president of the United States last night. Biden showcased what kind of president he would be during a pandemic by hosting the final day of the convention as a drive-in. ABC's Inez de la Quatera is in Washington this morning with the latest. Overnight, former Vice President Biden officially accepting his party's nomination for president. 
This is a life-changing election. This will determine what America is going to look like for a long, long time. Biden laying out a detailed plan to address the COVID-19 pandemic while blasting President Trump's handling of the crisis. Our current president has failed in his most basic duty to the nation. He's failed to protect us. He's failed to protect America. And my fellow Americans, that is unforgivable. The virtual DNC closing out its fourth and final night with messages from his family. We just knew that he had to run. And people he's met on the campaign trail. We were members of the same club. We, we, we stutter. While also showcasing party unity. All of Biden's primary opponents now throwing their support behind their former rival. Why the hell would we ever rehire Donald Trump for another four years? Joe Biden is right. This is a contest for the soul of the nation. President Trump hitting back, blasting the Democratic nominee while on the stump just a few miles from Biden's hometown. He abandoned Pennsylvania. He abandoned Scranton. Republicans will hold their convention next week. President Trump plans to deliver his acceptance speech from the White House. Inez de Liquitera, ABC News, Washington. Some new details surrounding the controversy around the U.S. Postal Service. Not only were six machines removed, an allegation of mail removed ahead of Congressman Joaquin Castro's latest visit has come up. Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez says he was made aware of the allegation and he says it is worth looking into. He says he is still waiting to hear guidance from the Texas Attorney General on whether he can prosecute federal officials in this matter. He says the AG can take up to 180 days to respond and the election is in 75 days. But Gonzalez says there are other options if he doesn't hear back. Requesting an investigation from an agency, for example, like the Texas Rangers, if they uh, were able to investigate and, and file a case with us, then we would review it and determine whether or not, again, there's any wrongdoing and whether or not we would be uh, able to present a case to a grand jury if it, uh, if it amounts to a felony, even if that happens after the election. Gonzalez said this would be a potential option. He said his office would give the AG a, quote, reasonable amount of time before making the next move, end quote. Later today, the city of Converse in Bear County will honor Captain Bryant Anderson, who lost his battle against COVID-19, a possession for the fire captain. We'll start later this morning at 11 at Santa Rosa Northwest Hospital, go through the downtown area and end at Heritage Oaks Mortuary on WW White. Captain Anderson, a 16 year veteran of the Converse Fire Department. Bear County Sheriff's Office will be closing several streets in town for the procession, which will contain of a convoy of about 20 marked vehicles. Converse Police Chief says the funeral for Captain Anderson probably won't be until about two weeks from now. Number of COVID-19 related deaths continues to rise. 21 more deaths confirmed in the latest report last night. Mayor Ron Nierberg says some of those deaths happened between May 24th through August 17th, a big window. We now have a total of 677 deaths in Bear County since the pandemic began. Some local teachers are concerned over not having enough personal protective equipment at school. Catherine Mendendorp and Katie Curtis are teachers at Northside ISD. They are part of the district's teachers union called Northside American Federation of Teachers. Catherine says they received a face shield, a package of wipes and a bottle of hand sanitizer. Some teachers in that district say that's not enough. Our administration did share with us that we can contact them and that they can give us more. Um, I just don't understand why we didn't receive more right up front. The PPE is, is some campuses have received it, some haven't received any at all. A spokesperson for NISD says it has enough PPE and some campuses are still sorting that out. The spokesperson said they have delivered gloves, masks, shields, sanitizer and wipes to campuses for distribution to classrooms. The district says if teachers need more items, they should speak with their campus principal. It's now nine minutes past the hour and 76 degrees. And still ahead, how Fitbit is using data from its wearables to help identify COVID-19 infections early. Outside with Lycam, finally Friday. Weekend forecast coming up with meteorologist Mike Osterhage. You're watching GMSA. 
And welcome back. It's 512. In your morning consumer headlines, DoorDash has partnered with grocery stores across the country to deliver goods to customers. This comes at a time when people are limiting their trips to stores due to the pandemic. All next week, they will be offering new and existing Dash Pass members $15 off their order. It has also enabled contactless delivery. 21% of Americans currently do not have any money saved in case of an emergency. That's according to the very latest study by Bankrate.com. They just released this new study. They say that number is actually at its lowest in 10 years of polling. Bankrate believes the stimulus checks and federal unemployment benefits may have helped more people save. Still, the study found 35% of Americans have less emergency savings now than they did before the pandemic. And many of those with savings do not have enough to cover three months worth of their living expenses. Time now, 513 and 76 degrees for now. Still ahead, getting your child back into school mode can be difficult after a very long summer vacation. But this year, of course, there are new challenges. Up next, we'll check out some of the best ways to motivate your kiddo to learn during a pandemic. And also next, how Google is working on ways to make sure people affected by wildfires are getting the information they need. My new normal, fewer asthma attacks. Less oral steroids. Taking my treatment at home. Nucala is a once monthly add-on injection for severe eosinophilic asthma, not for sudden breathing problems. Allergic reactions can occur. Get help right away for swelling of face, mouth, tongue, or trouble breathing. Infections that can cause shingles have occurred. Don't stop steroids unless told by your doctor. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. May cause headache, injection site reactions, back pain, and fatigue. Ask your doctor about Nucala at home. Find your new normal with Nucala. My hygienist cleans with a round head. So does my Oral-B. My hygienist personalizes my cleaning. So does my Oral-B. My hygienist uses just the right pressure. And so does my Oral-B. Oral-B combines a dentist-inspired brush head with the gentle energy of micro vibrations for the wow of a professional clean feel every day. My mouth says, wow. And so does my Oral-B. In today's Tech Bytes, Uber and Lyft still operating in California. The company said they would shut down there after a court order requiring them to reclassify drivers as employees. Uber and Lyft appealed, and a higher court has agreed to hear their cases. So the original order is still on hold. And Google has launched new tools to help users stay informed about the wildfires in California and Colorado. Searches about the fires will provide top stories, tweets from local officials, and maps of the fire's boundaries. It's all updated hourly. And research by Fitbit says data from its wearables can help detect COVID-19 infections. That data shows fatigue is the most common symptom. It also says 55% of, of the study's participants had a fever, suggesting temperature checks may not be enough to determine who's infected. You get a two for one. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. As many schools prepare for the first day back next week, parents may be struggling to get their children back into the groove of things. Oh, yes, we are. And <laughs> as we know already, this school year will look a lot different. Here's some ways you can keep your child motivated while learning during the pandemic. This school year will be especially challenging for students at all grade levels. And as parents, it's important to get them as prepared as possible. First, start with cutting out the late nights. This will help transition to a healthy sleep cycle for the school year. The CDC recommends 9 to 12 hours for kids 6 to 12 and 8 to 10 hours for teens. Secondly, get rid of distractions like cell phones and video games. Social media can be a waste of time and can get in the way of homework and household chores. This can also limit the amount of screen time your child has each day. Next, keep them organized. It can be as simple as having all of their supplies ready at all times. Organization can keep them on top of their work and will also encourage them to be more responsible. Also, set achievable goals for the next school year. Whether it's perfect attendance or better grades, realistic goals can help your kids feel a sense of accomplishment. With all of the new changes, it's important to get kids excited for the new school year. Yeah, you can just start with little things like getting them excited about meeting their new teacher mm -hmm. or maybe if they're learning virtually to, you know, getting excited about seeing their class on the computer. 
My sister is, uh, her daughter is uh, a freshman in high school this year and they are struggling after about six months of uh -huh, routine uh -huh. to find their new routine as of this week. Everybody's exhausted. Yes, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a change. It you know, is. It's trying to get them back on a schedule. Well, we're all rolling with the punches, including commuters mm -hmm. this morning. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Mark. Things still looking good out here right now. No accidents to report, but the construction on 410 eastbound at Vance Jackson still there. If you need to get on Vance Jackson, you're going to have to take the next exit up, which I believe is West Avenue. Take a turn around there or go down West Avenue and hit Vance Jackson eventually or go down I-10 uh, southbound and exit Vance Jackson Road there. But we this construction is still active. Here it is right now. Don't know how long it's going to be there for, but as you can see, that whole right lane going towards that exit is blocked off right now. Taking a look at other parts of the city, 35 and 16 four in the north side flowing very smoothly 35 at Evans looks the same looks great there and uh, what else we have 410 in Cherry Ridge there's that construction again keep that in mind if you're heading that way all right we'll watch out for that thank you Nick we will and Mike you look at some of these beautiful landscape pictures coming yes. to KSAT Connect it's, as you look at these it's almost like there's not anything wrong in the world <laughs> <laughs> you know that's a good way to, to Think about it. If you That's could just, just heavenly, isn't it? If you could just stare at that for a while. Now, I know Medina's real low right now, but you can't tell in that picture because uh, yeah, you it's, can, it's sunset. It, is that? That shoreline right there. Oh, the shoreline mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. a little bit lighter shade, but uh, yeah, that it, good way to put it. She just doesn't have care in the world staring at that, and then you blink and it's back to reality. Anyway, thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. It was beautiful. Uh, obviously, nothing is uh, showing up as of yet looking off to the east as far as any sort of a, a sunrise. Uh, depending on where you are is going to be dependent on how pretty the sunrise is because we do have some more, uh, well, kind of partly cloudy skies right now. Obviously, more clouds off to the west supporting some of these showers. Everything is moving down, just basically dropping straight down, straight north to south out there in parts of the hill country. We had a couple of showers that moved through Hondo earlier and now these are continuing to work their way down to, uh, throughout the uh, western half of Medina County and a couple of more are continuing to develop even north of the hill country right behind that banner right now and those will continue to slide on down light to moderate rain haven't seen any uh, lightning strikes being detected. I wouldn't be surprised if one or two of them perhaps would like to uh, to pop up. We're going to be seeing a whole bunch more triple digits again today and uh, like yesterday, this is dependent upon if we get some of those clouds to move on in here. We still have a chance for a couple of showers later on today. Uh, honestly, there were more clouds that popped up yesterday than what I had expected. Despite that, though, we did hit 100 right before those clouds kind of slid on in here. It was nice, though, in the afternoon with the low humidity and some uh, the cloud cover was kind of pleasant out there. Now, as far as the humidity is concerned, it will be dropping down later on today, not quite as much as yesterday, but we're not going to have outrageously high heat index readings uh, throughout the uh, afternoon hours. There's that uh, northerly flow around here, and that will, again, remain the case throughout the rest of today. And tomorrow, what's going to be interesting is, looks like we have even a bit more of a pronounced disturbance moving on through here, so a little bit better chance. Now, not... This looks like everybody's going to be getting rain. This is just kind of the chance of rain out there tomorrow, but it's a not a bad shot at something. All right, the tropics. There's those two areas of concern, and we are going to be looking at basically tropical depression number 14. Now, it's going to be a race to see who gets named first. It's going to be Laura and Marco. They both appear to be uh, going to be becoming tropical storms, I should say, by tomorrow. And they will both continue to race to the west and northwest. And actually, number one or number 14 as of right now looks like it's going to become a trop or excuse me a uh, category one hurricane by the time it makes landfall same thing with the one off to the east but it's that one that should hopefully give us a chance for some rain once we get into monday tuesday most of it though unfortunately we're not going to be on the good side of it to get a lot of rain 94 degrees today at noon partly cloudy skies and 100 for high temperature still a couple of showers out there tomorrow I think a little bit better chance for some rain in the afternoon. Now, not great, but just slightly better. And then Sunday, back to the sunshine and those rain chances Monday and Tuesday. And of course, we're looking at Tuesday of next week. So we're still, you know, a good four, almost five days out. And a lot can change as far as if those go into the Gulf of Mexico. Does the, the you know, the movement change there? So that's you got to stay tuned. All right. Thank you, Mike. Right now, 524, 76 degrees. And coming up next from comedy to romance to action, many different films are debuting today at the American Black Film Festival, and it's all free.
The American Black Film Festival kicking off its 10 day run today. You will find more than 90 films to watch. And as CNN's Douglas Hyde reports, is a great opportunity for movie buffs to get an early look at a new generation of talent. So how influential is our current time? From comedy wow. to romance to action, there's something for everyone at the American Black Film Festival, and it's all free. There's also a number of documentaries that really speak to this year's reckoning on race, even though they were made in 2019. The movies are completely dialed into social justice and issues about black race. You would think that every one of these movies was made after Mm. Mr. Floyd was murdered. The festival has a track record of putting up and coming black filmmakers on Hollywood's radar. It gave an early career boost to Black Panther director Ryan Coogler, who won a festival award back in 2011. I think the Ryan Coogler success really did trigger Hollywood's interest in our festival as a platform. Almost like in baseball, you have a farm system and you go look at us, you go scout the, the new you know, center fielder. Well, that's what we're in. We're, we're like that, you know, we're like that farm team. And, and so now the Hollywood scout are calling me constantly. I get calls all the time. And when promising talent is given a chance to get in the game, movie lovers everywhere win. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. Friday morning time checked. Now 528, still 76 degrees. And Postmaster General Louis DeJoy will appear in front of a Senate committee to address issues regarding mail and voting. We're going to have a preview. And another person associated with the 2016 Trump presidential campaign is facing federal charges. Good morning. It is Friday. It's August 21st. Thanks for joining us today and happy Friday. So my little girl went on a bike ride and she's like, I'm not sweating yet. And that was when the clouds came over. Yeah, we had a nice cloud deck come in yesterday evening. It cooled things down just a little bit. Mike Osterhage. Yeah, we went from 100 in the early afternoon hours down to about 95, 96. And yes, the humidity was still low, so it was pleasant yesterday afternoon. Humidity has come back up this morning, so it's kind of a different situation. And we still have this northerly airflow in the atmosphere. And of course, yesterday we had some of those disturbances moving on through there. And we will still have more today. As a matter of fact, we still have some right now. We've got some showers out there in our western counties. Everything is moving basically just as an arrow flies straight north to a south and moving through western Medina County as of right now, pretty much light to moderate showers. Haven't seen any lightning strikes being uh, picked up as of yet. And a couple of more of these are going to be developing and we will continue to see a few more even later on this afternoon. Of course, that's going to be very dependent upon or temperatures will be very dependent upon the cloud cover. Admittedly, there was a lot more in the way of some clouds yesterday afternoon than what was expected. And that's the possibility again today. Molds on the high side and uh, throughout the rest of today, 94 at noon, 100 for a high temperature. A shower or two is possible. Um, most of us won't see any, but you know, you can't trust this northerly airflow. A little bit better chance, actually, I think tomorrow afternoon for a couple of showers. So we'll check that out. And then next week, boy, keep your fingers crossed for what's going on in the tropics because we have got two systems, which is not that unusual, two systems developing, but two that are going to be going into the Gulf of Mexico at the same time, probably becoming hurricanes at the same time. We'll check that out in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Nick Solis, I know you had a couple of problems in the past hour. Anything going on yet? Yeah, right now I'm like, uh, we got some problems on Vance Jackson, not only 410 where we had the construction, but we just had an accident come out on I-10 at Vance Jackson. Now, details on this one say a vehicle dropped a hydraulic jack in the middle of the roadway, causing an accident. And many vehicles are, are now swerving, trying to avoid this hydraulic jack there in the middle of the roadway. SAPD is on scene, though, clearing that up. But this should cause some uh, delays for a little bit here until they get that jack and the vehicle off the roadway. But this is going to be southbound IH-10 West at Vance Jackson. Road. Now we're also still working on construction on eastbound loop northwest 410 on the exit to Vance Jackson on the other side there on 410. Uh, so now if you need to get to Vance Jackson, probably better exiting West Avenue and taking those cross streets there to get back on Vance Jackson. All right, let's take a look. Here's the construction still very active there. Just to keep that in mind if you're heading that way, not causing too much traffic buildup yet on 410, but it is there for the time being. All right, everyone, please get to work safely and make sure to wear your seatbelt. Mark. See you in a few. Thank you, Nick. Late breaking news. Fire crews at the scene of a fire at a restaurant in the 1000 block of Riddiman Road. That's near the intersection of Wurzbach Parkway on the northeast side of town. Katrina Weber is live there now with the latest. 
Well, good morning. The firefighters are telling me this looks like a grease fire inside this church's chicken. Now, just within the last two minutes, they wrapped up their hoses and for the most part left. I think there may be one or two units here still at the scene. But let me give you a look at the video from a little bit earlier this morning. The call came in after 4.30 this morning at this restaurant. The firefighters had to get on top of the roof. They could see a lot of smoke coming out of the vent area. They had their ladder truck up. Uh, for, for the longest time, but they didn't end up needing it at all because they were able to use just regular ladders and get on the top of that slanted roof to get inside. They say that they had to tear up the, a lot of the kitchen area in order to make sure there was no fire in the walls and in the vents there. So they, it, it is about $50,000 in damage that they're estimating. And they say it does not look like this restaurant is going to open today because of the, the damage done in the kitchen as a result of this fire, no injuries reported. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Keep us updated. U.S. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy is set to testify before a Republican-led Senate committee later today. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, this will be DeJoy's first chance to publicly address accusations that changes he's implemented would cause problems for mail-in voting. The man responsible for U.S. mail delivery thrust into the spotlight. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy is drawing bipartisan concern over changes put into place since his tenure began in June. He's since promised to pause changes until after the election. The point about the machinery being out exposed to the elements is how difficult it will be to reverse what he's done. Uh, even if there is some commitment confirmed in writing. DeJoy's administration has removed letter sorters, ended overtime pay, and reduced postal operating hours in numerous states. An internal email obtained by CNN instructs workers not to reconnect any machines taken offline without approval. Some of the damage has already been done and, you know, caused some distrust in the American people to use the mail system. Critics of DeJoy, an ally and supporter of President Trump, say his changes could hamper mail-in voting in November during a pandemic. The president has repeatedly made unfounded fraud claims about voting by mail, saying it's a Democratic attempt to prevent a second Trump term. This is just a way they're trying to steal the election. And everybody knows that. Because the only way they're going to win is by a rigged election. Republican leaders say the post office remains vital. We're not going to let it go under, and uh, certainly we're not going to have anything that affects the fall election. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And Wall Street is starting off on a good note going into the weekend. That's after a strong day for tech stocks. The tech-heavy Nasdaq composite gained 118 points, pushing it to another all-time high. One contributor to that was Apple, which saw its market value suppress $2 trillion for the first time. The S&P 500 made more modest gains, picking up 10 points. The Dow gained nearly 50 points. Parents will have an easier time getting vaccinations for their children. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services has expanded access to childhood vaccines during the pandemic. HHS now allows pharmacists in every state to give vaccines to kids over the age of three. The pharmacist must have a state license. Officials hope this will lead to more children getting vaccinated. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported orders for childhood vaccines fell sharply at the peak of the pandemic in the early spring. However, the American Academy of Pediatrics has slammed the move. The group represents pediatricians. They called the change incredibly misguided. And here at home, the Robert L. B. Tobin Land Bridge will soon connect Phil Hardberger Park east and west. We got a sneak peek from the top and you can see the bridge is taking shape. Some of the unique artistic designs like the Skywalk are already shining through. Construction is set to wrap up this fall. The contractor has about 50 people on the site daily to ensure they're done on time. The $23 million project was paid through private funds and city tax dollars. Construction started in November of 2018. Well, just to give you an idea of how big this project is, it's, this project alone has used 5,000 cubic yards of concrete, 1 million pounds of rebar, and 150 cubic yards of dirt just for this one project. The concrete pours are taking place each night this week. You can read more about it 
on our website at ksat.com. Just shy of 540. It's Friday, 76 degrees. Happy Friday and still ahead, a closer look at how Latino voters are having an increasingly stronger presence in presidential elections. And next, latest on the arrest of former President uh, Trump strategic advisor Steve Bannon, who has been federally indicted on several charges. And taking a look outside with live cam, it is 76 degrees. Humidity a little bit up from yesterday, but still not too bad in my opinion. Um, we're expecting some rain possibly next week. We're going to check in with Mike in just a bit. The man behind President Trump's 2016 campaign is facing new legal trouble. Steve Bannon was arrested and charged Thursday. Bannon's indictment makes him the sixth person tied to the president's 2016 campaign to face federal charges. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi has a story. This morning, Steve Bannon out on bail after being charged with money laundering and fraud. A smiling Bannon leaving court Thursday after pleading not guilty to the charges. He and three others are accused of defrauding hundreds of thousands of people by personally profiting off a scheme to raise money to help build President Trump's border wall. They see that this is a way uh, that they can take action to actually, you know, make happen a physical barrier on the southern border and support President Trump. With a group called We Build the Wall, Bannon and others raised $25 million, promising to build a section of the wall themselves. 100% of your money goes towards the wall. The project was started by Brian Colfidge, an Air Force vet who lost three limbs in Iraq. In fundraising pitches, he insisted every penny raised would go to the wall. I'm taking zero dollars of the salary, no compensation. It's going towards the wall. But the indictment alleges Colfidge spent hundreds of thousands on personal items, including home renovations, jewelry, and even cosmetic surgery. And Bannon allegedly received more than a million dollars to cover personal expenses. The indictment uh, looks really strong. Perhaps what's most damning is even after they found out about the existence of the investigation, they, they took extra efforts to cover it up. Bannon, who served as President Trump's chief strategist until 2017, was arrested on the coast of Connecticut on this $28 million yacht owned by an exiled Chinese billionaire, where he has reportedly been living for several months. Meanwhile, Trump and his team are now downplaying connections to Bannon, who was fired three years ago. I feel very badly. I haven't been dealing with him for a long period of time. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Time now is 544 and 76 degrees for now. Up next, how Latino voters on both sides of the aisle are becoming a stronger voice in this year's election season. Right now it's 547. Welcome back to GMSA. Both Republicans and Democrats will have to rely on a coalition of voters to win the November presidential election. And that includes Latino voters. A political scientist at UTSA tells our Jesse de Goyado they're each responsible for mobilizing Hispanic voters enough to make a stronger showing than in the past. In appealing to Latino voters, the freshly minted Democratic ticket, as well as the Republican incumbents, are all being reminded. Immigration reform is one issue, but Latinos are more concerned about the economy. Given that the pandemic, she says, has taken a heavy toll on minority communities, so much so. 60% of the Latinos have said that if they see someone at the polls without a mask, they're going to walk away. On top of working class Latinos losing their jobs, many facing eviction. But that's where she says President Trump has the advantage, small though it may be. Trump has a 3% edge on the economic confidence among Latinos. It's why, she says, Biden's camp is pointing out that as vice president, he oversaw the nation's recovery after the 2008 recession. Remember, voters have a short attention span. Perhaps most important, she says, will be educating many Latinos about the voting process, especially mail-in and absentee ballots. There's a lot of miscommunication, a lot of misunderstanding. And when both sides try to sway Latino voters, she says it's still true. You're going to have to recognize that there is no monolithic group when it comes to the Latino population. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. And a reminder, the deadline to register to vote is October 5th. Right now on KSAT.com, we have a link to register. Early voting starts on October 13th, and Election Day is November 3rd. We have all the information right now on KSAT.com slash vote 2020.
Well, it's no fun to dodge stuff on the freeway at highway speeds, but that's what's been happening this morning for some folks. An interesting uh, debris in the roads there, Nick. Yeah, definitely, Mark. We have a uh, hydraulic jack that flew off someone's car, hit another car on I-10 uh, southbound at Vance Jackson. This is causing heavy delays there. As you can see right there, we already have moderate traffic that's probably going to go here to heavy very soon. But this is going to be I-10 there at Vance Jackson on the main lanes. Well, keep in mind, we do have construction as well. Still eastbound Northwest Loop 410 at uh, the exit to Vance Jackson on the 410 side is still closed and shut down for the time being. But let's go to Transguide here. Here's that accident I-10 at Vance Jackson there. One lane is blocked off. Looks like that far right lane is blocked off there. Got the flare line and a lot of uh, uh, SAPD vehicles on scene as uh, this vehicle was totaled that was hit by the hydraulic jack. Be careful if you're heading that way. Those lights can be blinding at times. Uh, when you see them from afar, start slowing down right away. Oh, what a yeah, cr crummy way to start the day. We were yeah. talking about that. Think about it. If it's, uh, I mean, I even if it was a small little bottle jack, those things, things are, are still, you know, what, 25, 30 yeah. pounds, but a floor jack? And at 60 miles an hour? That, oh, those yeah. are those big ones that have the rod yeah. to exactly. Yeah, yes. that's those, a, yeah. big and bulky. Yeah, so you very said that, scary. You said that vehicle was uh, totaled? Yeah, I said like, like, it's totaled there. Uh, man. Wow. Mm. Anyway. Terrible circumstances. All right. All right. Not for we that. have a, a interesting forecast, especially coming up next week. I mean, with everything going on in the Gulf of Mexico, the thing is, though, hopefully we don't miss out on any rain from that. But that's going to be uh, kind of a close call. Beautiful view. I don't recall the last time we got a, a picture of the moon and this just little slice of a sliver of a crescent moon. It is the uh, waxing crescent. So we had the the new moon just a couple of days ago and it's going to be first quarter next Tuesday on the 25th and then in just about two weeks, a little less than two weeks on the second is going to be the full moon and we've got well partly cloudy skies this morning. Still got a couple of showers out there. This northerly flow that's what brought in those clouds yesterday after we hit 100 and then it knocked temperatures down. But uh, a couple of decent showers in between Hondo and Sabinal. This has been sort of a, a line going in through. So it's like you get one shower, keep going through, not sharing with the rest of us, unfortunately. But it is nice to see some of this uh, rain out there and even a couple of heavier downpours as well. Haven't seen any uh, lightning being uh, picked up in this. So we are going to see temperatures getting up into triple digit range again today. And of course, temperatures are very dependent upon the cloud cover. Should we get a situation like yesterday, it may hold us right below 100 or knock temperatures down again. And as far as uh, what's going to be going on, a couple of uh, scattered showers around the area, and we're going to have to watch out for maybe one of those nighttime storm complexes, although computer models aren't as aggressive with it tonight as what they were yesterday, but something to, to watch out for. Then also tomorrow afternoon, this is interesting how this computer model does have a bit of a more pronounced disturbance moving on through here to give us a slightly better chance for some showers and thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon. Then we go into further into the future, and this is where it, it's going to be almost... Hopefully we don't miss out from this, but it's going to be a really close call. So this computer model does have some uh, coastal showers by Monday. And then here comes that is the tropical. What is tropical depression 14 right now? It is going to be working its way in toward Houston. We're not going to be on the good side of it as far as rain. That's on the right hand side in relation to the, to the direction of travel. So uh, it may just be our northeastern counties that get a lot of the uh, the good precipitation from that. It's going to be we'll still have some around here. Maybe some of those wraparound showers, but it's not something that's well, depending on if the, the, the path changes, obviously, but as it looks right now, it's not going to be a huge rain event from this. Anyway, 94 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, a couple of scattered showers around here, uh, 100 for high temperature, a shower, maybe a thunderstorm, otherwise mostly sunny skies. And even though the humidity is going to drop down, Somewhat in the afternoon, it won't be quite as dry as yesterday. By the way, there's a lot more humidity out there this morning and 20% chance for an afternoon shower with thunderstorm tomorrow. That's going to be an interesting situation in the afternoon tomorrow. And then we're looking at next week. And yeah, as of right now, and again, a lot can change between now and then once this thing crosses the, the Yucatan Peninsula and moves into the Gulf. But we're not going to be on the good side as far as getting rain. We don't want to be inundated, obviously. Right. Right. And I know you mentioned it, but what were the storm names again? If, if they both go active Laura uh, and Marco. Marco and they're Marco. both forecast by uh, probably sometime late tonight to become tropical storms. OK, so it depends, right. just depends on which one gets up there first. Lots going on. Yeah. <laughs>
Thank you, Mike. Right now, 554, 76 degrees. And let's take a look at your winning a lot of numbers. We have pick three, nine, five, zero, fireball one, and your daily four, eight, seven, nine, zero, fireball four. Cash five numbers, two, 19, 23, 30, 32, and your Texas two step, four, eight, 11, 27, with a bonus ball of nine. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, Joe Biden's passionate acceptance speech officially becoming the Democratic presidential nominee. His powerful words for President Trump closing out the most unconventional convention in history. We'll have all the reaction this morning. Plus, Vice President Pence will join us here on GMA. Right now, KSAT.com Six Flags Fiesta Texas is planning to go through with Hollow Fest, but there will be some major changes. No indoor mazes, haunted houses, or indoor shows due to the pandemic. Instead, many events will remain outdoors, including the scare zones. We have details online on our website at KSAT.com. Still ahead in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio on your Friday, Tejano Artist Little Joe announced last month he had tested positive for COVID-19. We'll get an update on his condition and get advice when it comes to fighting off the virus. Outside with Transguide, we do have a number of incidents on the highways right now. Some leftover construction that uh, Nick is tracking. And of course, that incident at I-10 and Vance Jackson. We have a crew on the way to that, but Nick will get you updated after this. This morning, we know the identity of a mother whose kids found her dead yesterday on the northwest side. We will learn more about the investigation and why officers think the death uh, it involves foul play. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it is 75 degrees. Yes, that's true. The humidity returns. It was really nice yesterday morning, but you know what? It's not too bad yet. We're still at 75 degrees. We're going to check in with Mike in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. It is Friday, August 21st. Yes, happy Friday. Hope you guys had a great week. Uh, we had a lot of breaks, you know, in the evening as far as the temperatures, and the same was true with yesterday evening. That's right. We had a cloud deck come in that cooled things down a little bit, but Mike says we did hit the century mark, and he's tracking not only one, but two potential tropical storms in the tropics. Well, which that in itself is not really that unusual. Mm -hmm. You know, we're getting into the peak of the season right now, but they're both going to be uh, named Fracking. storms at about the same time. Right. Both coming into the Gulf of Mexico. Both are probably going to make landfall about the same time. Wow. So, it, yeah, and only one is going to give us a chance for some rain, and hopefully it gives us a better chance than what it's looking like right now. I'm looking outside and really can't see any uh, clouds out there. We do have partly cloudy skies. And as far as the humidity is concerned, we have dew points that have gone up about 12 degrees compared to yesterday. Yesterday, we were down in the uh, about mid and some upper 50s around here. So there's a lot more humidity to deal with this morning. We also still have this northerly flow there in the atmosphere, and we still have a couple of showers out in portions of the hill country and obviously few and far between. But it's nice to see a few of them out there and more are continuing to kind of stream down in here and we're going to keep this northerly flow around. So this is going to be the situation later on today with these little disturbances, this northerly flow. And that's why we had those clouds move in yesterday and some decent showers here and there. Molds on the high side, although it did drop down significantly from the previous day's reading. Temperatures right around mid 70s throughout the rest of the morning and we'll have partly cloudy skies and then the big warm up starts again. Now we do have, like I said, more humidity. It will drop down somewhat in the afternoon, but it's not going to be quite as comfortable as what we've had the past couple of days. And we are going to be topping off right around 100 later on today. More rain chances tomorrow. Not great, but still there. And then we'll check out what's going on in the tropics coming up a little bit later on. Time saver traffic right now. And Officer Nick Solis. And it's 10 near Vance Jackson. Yeah, you said? 10 in Vance Jackson. And we have construction on 410 in Vance Jackson. And this accident on I 10 in Vance Jackson. Okay. So I guess you want to avoid uh, Vance Jackson, you know, all you can right now this morning. Uh, right now, we're dealing with this construction first. It's been there since. I've been in 3.30 in the morning. This is eastbound Northwest Loop 410. Exit to Vance Jackson. It is still closed. Hopefully it is going to open up very soon, but they got that whole right lane blocked off there to that exit. Right now it's looking like if you need to go there from 410, probably exit West Avenue and take a cross street over back to Vance Jackson. Okay, this is the accident we're working on. This is Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg's clogged up already, but right now in the main lanes, it's northbound IH10 West at Vance Jackson Road. Looks like someone dropped a hydraulic jack there, which caused an accident. Uh, 
uh, causing a vehicle to hit the barrier. Uh, it's uh, it's causing uh, a lot of, uh, yeah, you know, there you go right there. So we got a tow truck on scene, a lot of SAPD, but it doesn't seem to be clogging up traffic as much as I thought. One lane is blocked off, but it is still flowing smoothly there on those main lanes. As we get into the 637 o'clock hour, it could cause some heavy delays, however, but just keep that uh, in mind if you are heading this way. Hopefully you can get it cleared soon. And uh, just please drive safe to work, wear that seatbelt, and go to the speed limit. Mark, Stephanie? All right, Nick, thank you so much. This morning, the Bear County Medical Examiner has identified the woman whose kids found her dead at her home yesterday. She has been identified as 27-year-old Cora Nickel. Her kids found her at a Northwest Side home on Maverick. That was yesterday afternoon. Police say one of her two children, ages five and eight, sent a text to their grandmother alerting her something was wrong. Police suspect foul play in that death and say Nichols body showed signs of significant trauma. Neighbors say they often heard the woman arguing with the man. The official cause of death is still being investigated. San Antonio police say an argument led to a shooting last night on the northwest side of town. It happened in the 8100 block of Academic Post around 7 last night. That's a block from Jimmy Elrod Elementary School. Police say two men were arguing when one person pulled out a gun. A man was taken to the hospital after he was shot in the shoulder, but is expected to recover. The other man drove away in a blue car, and this morning, police are still looking for him. And later today, the city of Converse and Bear County will honor Fire Captain Bryant Anderson, who recently lost his battle with COVID-19. A procession for Captain Anderson will start at 11 at Santa Rosa Northwest Hospital, go through the downtown area, and end at Heritage Oaks Mortuary on WW White Road. Anderson was a 16-year veteran with the Converse Fire Department. Bear County Sheriff's Office will be closing several streets in town for the processional, which will contain a convoy of about 20 marked emergency vehicles. The Converse police chief says the funeral for Captain Anderson probably will not happen until about two weeks from now. 605, some local teachers are concerned they don't have enough personal protective equipment. And it has many educators wondering if they can stay safe on campus. Catherine Mendendorp and Katie Curtis are teachers at Northside ISD. They are part of the district's teachers union called Northside American Federation of Teachers. Now, Minendorp says they received one face shield, one package of sanitary wipes, and a bottle of hand sanitizer. She says it is not enough. Our administration did share with us that we can contact them and that they can give us more. Um, I just don't understand why we didn't receive more right up front. The PPE is, is some campuses have received it. Some haven't received any at all. And Northside ISD officials say it has enough PPE and some campuses are still sorting them out. A spokesperson with the district says if teachers need more items, they should speak with their campus principal. Metro Health is requiring every local school district to post COVID-19 cases on their websites, but so far only two districts are doing that. Bernie ISD and Comal ISD, the only two reporting cases. Bernie ISD says there are seven and 106 people have been exposed. Comal ISD says there are at least four cases and about 25 people exposed. A spokesperson with Northeast ISD says there are eight confirmed cases in their district, but he says any ISD is not planning to post them on their website despite the directive to do so. You can read more about this story right now on ksat.com. And coming up, it's the final weekend of summer vacation for many students in San Antonio. Judson ISD, Harlandell, Somerset, New Braunfels, Southwest, and Northside ISD all starting classes on Monday. So be sure to check with your local district to see if classes will start in person, virtually, or as a hybrid. As the school year starts and continues, Case Hat will track the latest developments that could impact your child or children. See the latest headlines about the new school year and how COVID-19 is impacting it. Just head to the back to school page at ksat.com. And Metro Health reporting yesterday that 21 more people in Bear County had died of COVID-19. Those deaths occurred between May 24th and Monday. Health officials reporting 191 new cases. That drops our seven day average to 138 per day. Attention shoppers, HEB is no longer placing a limit on things like toilet paper, eggs and paper towels. 
The grocery store chain initially placed a limit on products to help protect the supply chain during the pandemic. Customers had started panic buying many of those items, causing a shortage in the area uh, at the start of the pandemic. HEB still limiting some items, though, such as cleaning wipes and soap. You can find a full list of what items are limited right now. Guess where? KSAT.com. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. And the director of the CDC saying southern states are turning the tide against new cases, but there are new concerns about college parties becoming super spreader events. Meanwhile, the government released a new timeline on when a vaccine could be widely available. ABC's Andrea Fuji has details. This morning, a new prediction from government health officials that a coronavirus vaccine may not be available to most people until as late as next June. It comes as positive signs start to emerge amid the pandemic. New data from Johns Hopkins University showing cases in the U.S. are on the decline for a fourth straight week. Overnight, Philadelphia announcing that restaurants can open for indoor dining with restrictions starting September 8th. And the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade will go on this year. New York City's mayor saying it'll look different, but traditions will stay the same. As the president continues to urge all schools to open, new guidelines from Policy Lab at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia that schools should only reopen in areas where positive test results are less than 5%. Only a couple dozen of, of the 750 50 counties that we track each week would meet those criteria today. In Los Angeles, it's day two of online learning for the second largest school district in the country. And in Indiana, a switch to remote learning for one school district after multiple students tested positive. <laughs> On college campuses, health officials say parties like this one at Syracuse University must stop. This junior at the University of Michigan, where more than a dozen students have tested positive, wants her classmates to do better. Your choices will have repercussions. Purdue suspended 36 students for partying. And the University of Kansas just connected dozens of new COVID cases to Greek houses on campus. I've been feeling pretty anxious, honestly. Um, I have really bad asthma. In pro sports, two members of the New York Mets tested positive, forcing their games against the Yankees and Marlins to be postponed. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. 610 on your Friday morning, now 75 degrees. And there will be fewer flights going to Del Rio after American Airlines says it is ending its service to the South Texas city. Find out what caused the airline to pull those flights. Students have been at home since spring break and most of them will start this year learning from home. After the break, we'll look at ways to motivate your kids despite changes during the pandemic. And Mike, keeping a close eye on the tropics. Will we expect rain next week? Well, we certainly hope so. We'll keep our fingers crossed and we will check in with him in just a bit. This school year will be especially challenging for students at all grade levels. And as parents, it's important to get them as prepared as possible. First, start with cutting out the late nights. This will help transition to a healthy sleep cycle for the school year. The CDC recommends 9 to 12 hours for kids 6 to 12 and 8 to 10 hours for teens. Secondly, get rid of distractions like cell phones and video games. Social media can be a waste of time and can get in the way of homework and household chores. This can also limit the amount of screen time your child has each day. Next, keep them organized. It can be as simple as having all of their supplies ready at all times. Organization can keep them on top of their work and will also encourage them to be more responsible. Also, set achievable goals for the next school year. Whether it's perfect attendance or better grades, realistic goals can help your kids feel a sense of accomplishment. And it's definitely a different school year. We hope all the kiddos, all the teachers, and all the parents who started school this week, we hope that they had a good week. And then we're wishing all those kiddos that starting are starting Monday. Monday. Yeah, have a good yeah. final uh, weekend of summer vacation. That's right, enjoy. Back to normal for just about everybody by next mm -hmm. week, or as close to normal as we're gonna get for now. <laughs> right now it's 616, 75 degrees. We're gonna talk to Mike in a moment about two systems that could become tropical storms, but first. Let's go ahead and talk to Nick Solis. Are we still having problems there on I-10? Yeah, it looks like it's still there. The accident there involving the hydraulic jack is still there on I-10 in Vance Jackson. Looks like it's gonna be clearing up here 
shortly, however. And we still have construction eastbound northwest loop 410. The exit to Vance Jackson still closed. Hopefully this opens up any minute, but it is still closed for the time being. And then on the other side there of the other highway, northbound I-10 west at Vance Jackson Road. Still got that uh, accident there. Uh, looks like they are in, in picking up this jack right now. They asked for debris pickup to come pick it up off the middle of the road. So it's starting to cause a little bit more traffic. You can see traffic went from light to about moderate now. And as we hit 630, 7 o'clock, if this is still there, expect heavy delays going northbound I-10 at Vance Jackson. That's going towards 410. Yeah, Nick, uh, based on what you're telling us about this hydraulic jack, it's not the kind of thing they could just throw in the back of a SAPD cruiser. Yeah, no, it's not. It's, it's like it's a hydraulic like grapple or something like that. Oh, really? I, yeah. Weird. Yeah, okay. So, that's big. a lot of problems. No, Thanks. Words, just <laughs> a big hunk of metal flew out of that car. Right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Mm, okay. Dangerous. Uh, school is about to get underway, and of course, you know, I still want to show the school bus because it's just kind of that that symbolic for, for school. There are some. Underway, oh, but it's okay, to be oh. it's okay to be nostalgic. <laughs> yeah, and some folks are still, some yes. kids are still ride buses mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. in some areas, but uh, 75 degrees this morning. A couple of showers off to the west. Going to show you that in just a second. And then 100 for a high temperature. We hit it yesterday, then the clouds came in, knocked temperatures down about uh, 4 or 5 degrees or so, but uh, we are going to be hitting it again today, and we'll still see a couple of showers around the area today as well. Take a look at this picture. Very cool. This is Huh. getting setting up for a perfect sunset shot and then there's the sun gleaming right through the eyepiece of the camera. That great picture. Thank you very much for the KSAT Connect picture. And uh, still got a couple of clouds hanging around out there as of right now. Not really seeing the uh, the glow of the sunrise as of yet. There's those few showers. We've got this northerly airflow. That's what has given us uh, shower basically every day this week we've kept this northerly airflow aloft so it's like on one hand you're getting up to 100 on the other hand we're getting some of these showers around here and uh, they appear to be dying down a little bit but still a couple of them out there and they're, this has sort of been the track this morning although nothing has been too overly heavy and we still have a few uh, decent showers here lakey you can expect uh, some of those showers to move on through they're not lasting all that long not any sort of a drop bust or anything like that but that will continue to be the case later on today and then tomorrow, first of all, take note how that was flowing in from the Gulf of Mexico. Just we're back to getting all that humidity being pumped on in here. So maybe a couple of uh, coastal showers. And then tomorrow afternoon, what's going to be interesting is this particular computer model does have uh, fairly it's being fairly aggressive as far as another disturbance moving on through here with a few more showers, a couple of thunderstorms, and that's going to be again tomorrow late and then into the uh, evening hours and Sunday back to basically just very hot and humid. All right, here's the tropics. We've got two systems. It's 13 and 14 as of right now, but it looks like 14 may become a tropical storm first. So this would be Laura and then this would be Marco and they're both moving in relatively the same direction off to the west to northwest. And it looks like also that uh, thir or excuse me, 14 is going to become a category one hurricane when it reaches the uh, Gulf of Mexico. That's the one that's going to at least going to give us the chance for some uh, rain and 13 as of right now is going to uh, a lot of rain along Florida in the southeast United States, but notice where the path takes this one. There's the the cone of uncertainty, of course, and it can be anywhere in here, but the center of that is right about Houston, which means we're not on the good side of it as far as rain is concerned. Now we'll start to see some of those showers along the coast by Monday, and then here's that system moving on in there. Most of the rain is to the right hand side of the direction of travel, so we're on the not as rainy side. We will see some of these wraparound showers, but again, this is as it looks as of right now. A lot can change between now and then. It could take a path further to the south. It could move well away from us. So it's definitely something we watch over the course of the weekend. 94 degrees today, partly cloudy skies at noon and a high temperature up to 100. A few showers out there, maybe a thunderstorm or two going to be scattered about few and far between. And then tomorrow, about a 20% chance putting it as of right now for a couple of uh, showers maybe a thunderstorm and then we go into Sunday still upper 90s. We will have uh, some humidity around here as well and those chances of rain maybe late Monday into Tuesday. Hopefully we get a bunch of rain because after that it's back to triple digits. And Katie and Sarah will be tracking those big storms out in the uh, tropics throughout the weekend. Yep. Thank you, Mike. For the rain. Thank you, Mike. 621, 75 degrees. And many people are still working from home during the pandemic. In today's GMA First Look, we're going to see how you can work remotely in paradise. 
Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a free iced coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. There's moving. And there's moving with Move Free Ultra. It has triple action support for your joints, cartilage, and bones. And unlike big glucosamine chondroitin pills, it's all in one tiny pill. Try Move Free Ultra now. Feel the difference. Hey, can I go? Uh, hold on one second. Sure. Okay. Okay. Safe driver save 40%. Guys, guys. Check it out. Safe driver save 40%. Safe driver save 40%. Safe driver save 40%. That's safe driver save 40%. It is, that's safe driver save 40%. It's right there. It's him, he's here. He's right here. Hi. Hi. Hey. <laughs> that's totally him. That's him. That's totally the guy. Safe drivers do save 40%. Click or call for a quote today. For skin as alive as you are, don't settle for silver. Gold Bond. Champion your skin. In this morning's GMA First Look, as millions of children and parents get ready for remote learning and remote working this fall, a new trend is emerging, doing it all from paradise during the pandemic. High school teacher Lamine Gobe is going to work from Barbados for a full year. It looked like um, a great opportunity. Barbados is touting its so-called welcome stamp plan, an offer to work from paradise for 12 months. Lamine saw a post on social media and is heading there in October. I think more people should be interested in going abroad to work remotely. If you can, why not? Right? You get to see the world. You get to try something new. And he's not the only one embracing this new trend. Coming up, we'll introduce you to more people who've made the leap to paradise and tell you about the deals that can make this dream a reality without breaking the bank. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. In your morning, Consumer News, Fort Worth-based American Airlines will no longer offer flights to Del Rio. The airline says it'll drop flights to an additional 14 cities around the country. Change takes effect in October when a federal requirement to serve certain communities ends. American is blaming low demand during the pandemic as a cause for the route cuts. 21% of Americans currently do not have any money saved in case of an emergency. That's according to a study by Bankrate.com. But the company says that number is actually at its lowest in 10 years of polling. Bankrate believes the stimulus checks and federal unemployment benefits may have helped more people save. Still, the study found 35% of Americans have less emergency savings now than they did before the pandemic started. And many of those with savings do not have enough to cover three months worth of their expenses. To California now, Uber and Lyft do not have to call their workers employees, at least not right now. A higher court agreed to hear the company's appeals on how they classify workers. Both companies said they would shut down operations in California if the court ordered them to designate workers as employees. An employee designation means Uber and Lyft would have to pay workers minimum wage and offer health benefits. Google has launched new tools to help users stay informed about the wildfires in California and Colorado. Searches about the fires will provide top stories, tweets from local officials, and maps of the fire's boundaries. Fitbit using data from its wearable technology to see if it can identify COVID-19 infections early. Data from the study shows fatigue is a most common symptom of COVID-19, and the Fitbit detects it on its hourly update. It also says 55% of its study's participants had a fever, suggesting temperature checks may not be enough to determine who is infected with COVID-19. Time now, 627 and 75 degrees for now. The Hano artist Little Joe announced last month he had tested positive for COVID-19. We'll get an update on his condition and his advice when it comes to fighting off coronavirus. And taking a look outside with Trans Guide, Nick Scalise, of course, watching closely that uh, right there on I-10 and Vance Jackson, where they have a little bit of a holdup. So we'll be right back with more. And Joe Biden is the Democratic Party's nominee for president on his third time running to be commander in chief. We will hear from experts from the acceptance speech he gave last night. 
Outside with live cam, the sun is trying to come up. It will eventually here this morning. It's Friday and you're watching GMSA. The date is August 21st and a good morning to you. Hope you slept well last night. We're going to check in now with uh, Mike and Nick and see how things are looking in weather and traffic. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. morning. Yeah, look at this picture. It is absolutely gorgeous out there. Sun's not going to peak over the horizon for about another uh, half hour, 35 minutes or so. But wow, just absolutely gorgeous out there. 75 degrees. That's the normal low temperature. Comfort is at 64, 74 in Castroville. The difference is there's more humidity than the past couple of days. Remember, we had those nice, coolish mornings. Nick described it as almost like fall, but uh, not this morning, unfortunately. We do have a couple of showers out uh, to the west. There have been a few of them that moved through basically western uh, Medina County this morning, and those are kind of dying down into uh, northern Frio County, but still a few more out there in northwest parts of the hill country. Lakey, you're uh, about to get some, uh, well, decent showers. Not going to last all that long, not any sort of a drought breaker, but still not bad. Molds on the high side this morning and uh, throughout the rest of today, partly cloudy. You know, those couple of showers off to the west, so take into account some of those clouds, but more clear skies off to the east, and yeah, more humid. 100 again today and a few more showers again today like we've had the past couple of days. And then tomorrow, a few uh, showers and storms in the afternoon, maybe a little bit better chance for some rain tomorrow. Then we go into next week. We've got a couple of tropical systems right now, both tropical depressions. Both are forecast to become tropical storms. Both are going to move into the Gulf of Mexico. One of them is going to give us a rain chance and it's not looking right now. It's not looking great details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and boy, you've been talking about that incident on I-10. Is that still going on? Not going on and no one was hurt. Always good news oh, there. Okay. Yeah, Mike, but other than that, Things are starting to look good now on this Friday morning. No accidents, just a little bit of construction still on 410 eastbound 410 at Northwest Loop. Uh, or, or, I'm sorry, eastbound Northwest Loop 410. The exit to Vance Jackson Road is still closed. It's been closed all morning. Hopefully this gets cleared up very soon, but it is blocking off a whole lane there and that exit. All right, drive times eastbound 151, 1604 to 90. You got a 10 minute ride, and if you're 90 eastbound from 1604 to 35, 11 minutes, really good times there. You got a real smooth commute this morning if you're heading that, those directions. 410 at Austin Highway in the northeast side looking good. 10 at Callahan East looking even better. Traffic flowing smoothly there. I-10 at Frio Inn and outbound it's looking great right now. And we'll do one more here. 10 at UTSA Boulevard. Traffic picking up light to moderate, but still not that bad. All right, everyone, just make sure to wear that seatbelt and get to work safely. Thank you, Officer Solis. We have late breaking news right now on San Antonio's northwest side. Police are on the scene of a shooting. It happened in the 1100 block of Callahan. That's near Culebra Road. Our Katrina Weber joins us live with the latest. Well, good morning. Our police are telling us that two men were shot here at this apartment complex, the 1100 block of Callahan, and they say it looks like they shot each other. Now, police have been focusing their attention on the second floor apartment here of Building 11. Uh, we've seen them in there shining their flashlights. They say that this is where the man who they call the victim, he's in his 20s, they say he lives in that apartment. Now, another man in this complex came over. Police say that they got into it a little bit after 530 this morning and it appears that they each shot each other. They found the other man who they call the suspect back home at his own apartment. Uh, both of them were taken to a hospital and police tell us that it looks like one of their injuries may be life threatening. I believe that is the man they're calling the victim. Uh, they are talking to neighbors here and again, they've been in and out of that apartment. They've also gone to the apartment of the man who they call the suspect and uh, have been searching that as well. Uh, it's unclear if they collected any of the weapons involved, but they, again, say that they're not looking for anyone else, that they believe these two men are the only ones who were involved in the shooting. Reporting live on the Northwest Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. The Democratic National Convention wrapped up its final night with Joe Biden accepting the party's nomination for President of the United States. Capped off a week of virtually delivered testimony in favor of the former Vice President. CNN's Nadia Romero has more. I accept this nomination for President of the United States of America. All week, Democrats building up to this moment. It's time for us, for we the people, to come together. Joe Biden, the party's nominee for president, calling for a united front to defeat Donald Trump this November. Our current president has failed in his most basic duty to the nation. He's failed to protect us. 
He's failed to protect America. And my fellow Americans, that is unforgivable. His speech coming at the end of a four-day virtual convention, featuring the party's most popular figures, making the pitch for Biden, while offering a scathing rebuke of the current commander-in-chief. Donald Trump hasn't grown into the job because he can't. Donald Trump is the wrong president for our country. Donald Trump's failure of leadership has cost lives and livelihoods. Democrats and Biden believing a Big Ten approach is the key to victory, calling on moderates and even Republicans to join the effort. America isn't just a collection of clashing interests of red states or blue states. We're so much bigger than that. A ticket telling Americans at home that now is the time for action. This is our moment. This is our mission. May history be able to say that the end of this chapter of American darkness began here tonight as love and hope and light join in the battle for the soul of the nation. President Donald Trump spent the day near Joe Biden's hometown of Scranton, Pennsylvania, where he was born before his family moved here to Wilmington, Delaware, trolling Joe Biden and trying to take away the spotlight. And of course, he's taken to Twitter to talk about his disapproval of Joe Biden. But the night still belongs to Joseph R. Biden, officially accepting the nomination and beginning his campaign trail to November. In Wilmington, Delaware, I'm Nadia Romero. And now that the Democratic National Convention has concluded, it is time for the Republican Party to hold their national convention. It will take place from Monday to Thursday of next week in Charlotte, North Carolina. There will be fewer staff and significantly fewer delegates at the convention in order to follow state guidelines during the pandemic. First Lady Melania Trump is scheduled to speak on Tuesday. Vice President Mike Pence is expected to accept the VP nomination once again on Wednesday. And President Donald Trump scheduled to accept the nomination for the Republican Party on Thursday. The November election now 74 days away. We'll continue to report on stories that could impact you in the voting booth up until Election Day. Find out the latest local, state, and national stories. Just head over to our Vote 2020 page on ksat.com. U.S. Department of Health and Human Services now allows pharmacists in every state to give vaccines to kids over the age of three. The department says it hopes this will lead to more kids getting vaccines. CDC reported orders for childhood vaccines fell sharply at the peak of the pandemic in early spring. However, the American Academy of Pediatrics, which represents pediatricians around the country, is calling the move, quote unquote, incredibly misguided. Former White House advisor Steve Bannon facing charges of fraud for allegedly ripping off donors from the online funding scheme We Build the Wall. Investigators with the United States Postal Inspection Service arrested him yesterday. Federal prosecutors say Bannon and three others created a scheme to collect $25 million from hundreds of thousands of donors. Bannon has pleaded not guilty. The U.S. Justice Department is asking the U.S. Supreme Court to review the decision, re, rather review the decision to vacate the death sentence for a convicted Boston Marathon bomber, Johar Sarnayev. This means the Boston bomber could be given a new penalty phase trial where a new set of jurors will decide if he will be put to death. His current sentence states that he will remain in federal prison for the rest of his life. Lori Laughlin and her husband Massimo Giannoli are scheduled to be sentenced today in Boston for their role in the college admissions scandal. The couple pleaded guilty in May of paying half a million dollars in bribes to get their two daughters into the University of California. Attorneys say Laughlin's plea deal calls for her to serve two months in prison and Giannoli's calls for him to serve five months. Right now, it is 640, 75 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. And a famous Tejano singer is speaking out about his experience with COVID-19. After the break, we're going to hear from Little Joe, and he'll tell us why it's so important to take the virus seriously. 644, legendary Tejano artist Little Joe announced last month that he had tested positive for COVID-19. And a little over a month later, he is better, but still dealing with its effects. Our Erica Hernandez spoke to him at his home in Temple via Zoom about the virus and why he says it is so important to take it seriously. I'm doing great. I, I really am. I feel good. Five-time Grammy winner Little Joe Hernandez feeling a lot better after a rough battle with COVID-19. Well, it started uh, with the aching feeling like from flu, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, body aches and stuff. But uh, <clears throat> the sweats, 
the fever was terrible. But when my breathing started getting shorter and shorter, then I really got concerned. His wife, daughter, and niece also testing positive. Luckily, none had to get admitted into a hospital. And I'm one of the fortunate, my family and I are really lucky people because we survived it. The 79-year-old still feeling some effects of the virus that has left him weakened and dealing with lingering lung discomfort. But I'm still wearing the mask, doing the one hand washing, keeping the distance, uh, because uh, this is such an incredible and terrible virus, so contagious and dangerous, that I hope that the people that have not yet experienced it will really, really... Um, take care of themselves. While looking forward to performing again one day, he has a message to those who have yet to get the virus or don't take it seriously. This is not a remedio kind of remedy, kind of Mexican remedy kind of illness that you can control. I plead with my friend, I plead with everyone just to please, please be careful. Now, Little Joe has been entertaining crowds for over five decades, and he tells me when he's able to return on stage, he has something special planned. Now we have more with him on our website, including him talking about his new biography that was released earlier this year. All that and more on KSAT.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. And right we now. are glad little Joe is feeling better. Yes, wishing him the best. 646, and I may be going on a limb here, Nick, but on some of these TransKai cameras, I swear we haven't seen traffic volume like this since maybe early March. Early March for sure, Mark. It is uh, picking up a little bit out there more than usual, and I expect next Friday is going to look a lot you know, worse, even busier there out there in the roadways, so enjoy it for the time being. Right now, a lot of green on the screen, though. Things are looking good out there. A little bit of construction, eastbound loop, northwest 410. Exit to Vance Jackson is still closed. It's been closed all morning. Keep that in mind if you're heading that way. Don't know when it's going to open. Uh, still closed down. All right, drive times. If you are on I-10 westbound from the northwest side of I-35 to 1604, you got an 11-minute commute. And if you're 10 I-10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to I-35, 13 minutes. Really good times there all around. All right, outside of the Trans Guide, 410 at Cherry Ridge, still shut down there. Like I said, that exit to Vance Jackson. If you need to get to Vance Jackson from 410, take West Avenue, take the cross streets down back to Vance Jackson. 37 at Jones looking good. Another shot of the 410 at Jackson Keller uh, construction there. Again, in 10 West at 410 looking good. Yeah, look at all those yeah. cars. Looks busy again. Nice, nice to see folks back out on the roads. Thank you, Nick. As I glance at Mike's case at Connect picture, I get this. It, it, the ca I guess the caption could be ever feel like somebody's watching you. It looks interesting. <laughs> yeah. I love this caption. It was my mom done told me bring back something for dinner. Rabbit classic Looney Tunes line, yes. but this could be a perfect caption contest because it's like, okay, is this one in charge and he's, you know, <laughs> given the ground rules, he's the referee. No, um, that one in the middle is in trouble and being oh, punished. Oh, is that it? Yes. Yeah, was he yeah. part of this group and they kicked him out because right. he was five yes. or four? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. The one in the middle is social distancing. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. He's the only one doing it right. It's always funny driving up 281 and there's always on the, the street lights right up the middle and there's, you know, they're just kind of waiting up there. It's like, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Watching mm -hmm. Mike Osterhey. Very cool looking picture. Thank <laughs> you very much for that one. Speaking of cool pictures, that one's gorgeous. Sun's going to be popping over the horizon in about uh, what, 15 minutes or so. We still have, I mean, here's this northerly flow, and this is what we've had the past couple of days and why we've had some of those, you know, it's been 100, and then we get a couple of showers in the afternoon, and obviously there's some leftover energy moving down to the south. That's going to be the situation again today as well, which is what computer models are indicating. Just a couple of scattered showers out there. We'll still be hitting 100 tomorrow. And what's interesting is this model is a little more aggressive with something trying to pop up late in the afternoon into the early evening hour. So we'll definitely have to keep tabs on that. Then we go into Sunday and it looks like it may settle just a bit. Then we got to start looking at the tropics. Now, both are still tropical depressions. This is 13 and 14, but it looks as though 14 may become a tropical storm a little bit sooner, but both of them by tomorrow morning should be tropical storms, and it's going to be Laura and Marco, and they're both working their way to the west to northwest, and it's this one's going to be really affecting Florida, obviously. This is the one we got to keep an eye on, and again, the cone of uncertainty. This does not mean it's going to be traveling in this straight line. It could be anywhere in this vicinity. So should it take a path a little bit further to the in a westward direction, we would really get a lot of rain from it or it could stay further off to the east. But as of right now, 
we're not in a good position as far now, again this is as of right now still got four almost five days because the rainiest side is the right hand side in relation to the direction of travel which is what this computer model indicates that we would start to see some of the rain around here by Tuesday yes we will get some wraparound showers but the vast majority of it in the scenario as of right now would be well off to the east of us. So we got to keep our fingers crossed for that now. But then again, we don't want the thing to make a direct hit. Obviously 94 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature. Yep, we're going to be hitting 100 and there will be a few showers out there as well. And then tomorrow I'm going to keep it down a notch, a uh, little bit better chance maybe for some afternoon rain 98 Sunday and then a couple of more rain chances around here Monday and Tuesday. But definitely what's going on with number 14 right now, which is probably going to be Laura. Got to watch that one. Yeah, next week looks like it could be pretty interesting. First yeah. part of the week. Mm -hmm. We'll be watching very closely, Mike. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Right now it is 650. We're at 75 degrees. And I wanted to wish a happy birthday to my little brother. This is Art, 45 today. Happy birthday, Art. Hope you have a wonderful day. Love you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And outside with live cam. We we'll check back in with Officer Nick Solis, our traffic expert, coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio. It's Friday morning. So glad you are starting your day with us here on KSAT. We'll be back. Good morning. I'm Katrina Weber, live on the northwest side, where police are investigating a double shooting. Two men at this apartment complex here in the 1100 block of Callahan Road. Police have been focusing on a second floor apartment in this building. They also have another area uh, near the other building uh, roped off. They say that two men who live here got into a dispute at this building on the second floor, and they apparently shot each other. Now, they are calling the man in this apartment the victim, the other man they refer to as the suspect. They did find the suspect at his home. They say after the shooting, he went home. Police found him there. Both men taken to the hospital, and they say that the victim appears to have life-threatening injuries. Now, we don't know yet what they were arguing about, what this whole dispute was about, but again, police say they're not looking for anyone else. They believe that these two men did shoot each other. Reporting live in the Northwest Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thanks for the update, Katrina. All right, let's take one last look at traffic with Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Steph. All right, look, taking a look right now, this is uh, eastbound 410 at Cherry Ridge. Uh, this is looking at that Vance Jackson exit that is still closed down there. This uh, traffic looks very heavy right now. Expect a delay if you're going eastbound 410, starting from around uh, Bandera Road, Calabra Road there. Uh, it might take a little while to get to work because of this construction still there. Mike? Thank you, sir. And look at the live cam. Beautiful. Clear sky is going to be a great looking sunrise, but notice right there along the horizon, it almost looks a little fuzzier. We've got a bit more humidity this morning, not quite as nice as the past couple of days. 75 degrees, so still normal temperatures, some 60s in the hill country. Got these little disturbances sliding on through here from the north, and so we'll keep a couple of showers around throughout the day today. Still, we'll hit 100, and a few more showers around tomorrow. Then Monday, Tuesday, that's when hopefully we feel some effects from some of those storms, at least one of those storms entering the Gulf of Mexico. Hopefully. Thanks, guys. All right, you guys have a great Friday, and we'll see you back here at 9.